Hello, in our previous discussions we are talking, we are discussing about uh, the planning, strategic planning and uh, the existence of planning in different levels of organizations uh, at the corporate level, the divisional level, business level and product level. And we were also discussing about the role of strategic planning and the two types of marketing plan uh, that can be uh, worked out. Uh, for a, uh, for an organization, a strategic marketing plan and tactical marketing plan. So about the levels of planning in an organization, we will first discuss about the corporate and divisional strategic planning. So when uh, we take the corporate and divisional strategic planning, what do we mean by that? What, what do we mean by corporate or divisional strategic planning? If you see uh, this about, if you follow this organization, ACI Limited, here you see that they have so this is their corporate uh, division uh, actually by corporate division we mean <clears throat> the overall uh, management of the organization the top management of the organization overseeing all business divisions uh, of that organization so they don't think about specific business units like pharmaceuticals consumer brands or agribusiness they think about the whole uh, umbrella of aci about um, so uh, that's the corporate planning and when we think about the divisional planning we mean each of these three divisions so pharmaceuticals consumer brands or agribusiness now sometimes uh, what we call as corporate or divisional planning uh, corporate planning we understand that this is the top management of that organization who is overseeing all the divisions but the divisional planning can also be called in other names like this Baxinco organization, the other prominent organization in Bangladesh, if you follow them, you can see that they don't call the name like business units or divisions, they call them as verticals. So here sometimes you can uh, hear the word that uh, industry verticals. By that they mean in what kind of divisions, you know, different industries they are working. So here they have like eight industry verticals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we see seven uh, verticals, so seven divisions. Uh, they are working on now when the organizations they are uh, they are working out uh, to make a, a plan for the corporate uh, uh, for the uh, for the corporation and as we understand that actually corporate uh, planning and divisional planning are uh, very close to each other in the sense of their scope because when you so uh, corporate and division uh, they both are uh, setting an overall plan for uh, for many units of work uh, for many units available under them so uh, from that angle I will take the corporate and also divisional planning in one go so now uh, moving on divisional planning so in uh, in one uh, you know umbrella so uh, when we think about the plan then uh, because some companies they are not so big to say that you know uh, uh, they must have to do the divisional planning because the, for them they have several units under one uh, uh, main holding so they can just make a corporate plan which is maybe equal to a divisional plan for another big corporations so now when we think about uh, what we do in that type of corporate planning so we first start with defining the corporate mission and then we establish the strategic business units of that organization and then we assign resources to each uh, strategic business units and uh, we assess the growth opportunities. So okay, uh, now if we move on, so uh, first of all, just uh, let's, let's take a pause here because uh, in our discussion, in this uh, discussion, we will actually focus on this uh, corporate mission. And uh, this is very important to uh, to remember that uh, uh, it's, it actually establishes a sense of purpose uh, for an organization. It also establishes uh, a guiding uh, platform for the organization and a, a guiding principle for the organization that what they are doing. So if you, uh, if I just uh, t take you, I mean, to the next slide to see that what are the basic questions we may encounter in establishing this uh, direction uh, by defining the corporate mission statement here we see that uh, it is actually that uh, the, it is actually uh, suggested by peter drucker uh, uh, so the 
you know, if in the last century, he was one of the most uh, prominent uh, management thinkers. So, uh, Peter Drucker, he advised that an organization should ask uh, uh, about what is their business and then who is their customer and then uh, what is of value to their customer and what will be their business be in future and what should their business be. So here comes like you know the form of the business and you know the, uh, the type of the customer and also what kind what is actually valuable what is the customer value and uh, wha how they will and what uh, how they will serve it and how should they serve it. So if you ask me because there are uh, other philosophers and management thinkers they have also contributed in uh, in this type of endeavor that how we can define our corporate mission statement in a very uh, in a very clear way and in a very uh, uh, convincing way uh, and you know uh, we have already uh, understood that our products can be of any types and even we ourselves can be a product so if we consider about ourselves as like a person uh, to be ma to be marketed or any other 10 types of any other 10 types of product then uh, uh, 10 types of products that we are uh, planning to market uh, how do we actually uh, define the mission statement i will definitely uh, advise you to you know keep these uh, five questions in mind but if you want me to just make it a little more simpler, then I will say that you can just think about what are you doing? That means, uh, what do you do? So, what do you do? And then second thing is, who do you do it for? So, who do you do, who do, you do it for? And then uh, the third thing is uh, about how do you do it? How do you do it? Can you see a resemblance or a similarity of these three basic questions with the three basic questions that we have uh, learned in our economics, uh, you know, uh, lessons? That the three basic questions in economics we ask is that what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. So here you see that what to produce or what do you do, who do you do it for, and how do you do it. So I can say that, you know, uh, what do you do? So again, I am writing the same thing just uh, by, you know, by making it more identical with the questions of economics. So what do you do? What do you do? And then second one is for whom do you do it? So for whom? you do it and then third one is how do you do it how do you do it so simple thing what and for whom and then how do you do it if we can answer these three questions uh, in a, in some uh, in a statement then we mean that we have uh, established or we have uh, we have defined our mission statement i can take you to some organizations uh, where I think that they have mentioned it or they have managed it quite well. For example, uh, I want to first take you to a uh, blog where it is, uh, you know, it is, um, uh, it is uh, evident that from some organizations uh, here they mean that we want to, uh, so uh, ED Insurance uh, they, their mission statement is to provide our policyholders with as near perfect protection, as near perfect a service as is humanly possible and to do so at the lowest possible cost. So who is, uh, for whom they are doing it? They are doing it for their policyholders. And what do they do? They are giving the insurance. Uh, in the policyholders it is actually implied. And how do they do it? And near, you know, here you have this uh, outline. And for Nature Air, another organization, they mean it uh, to offer travelers, so that's about for whom they do it, a reliable, innovative, and fun airline. So uh, what do they do? They give actually a airline service. And how do they do it? And here you see the rest of the things about how do they do it. 
Nissan is also providing the same type of statement and I leave that to you uh, that how do you define it you have uh, Nissan you have St. Paul a fire and marine insurance company you have Target one of the famous store uh, you know retail uh, store in USA and you will find out their mission statement and please try to explain it that you know you can pause this video and try to explain that and how do they uh, distinguish between uh, these three parts of the mission statement what how and for whom and here uh, this is one of my favorite organization and they are also stating their mission statement uh, uh, like to provide a free world-class education for anyone anywhere so uh, what do they give they are giving or they are doing a free world-class education for whom for anyone anywhere and how do they do it actually that is implied uh, in the so actually a mission statement um, here it is implied that it is an online education but since Khan Academy is not only limiting its activities online it is also with online education it is also giving on-site project-based education that's why they have not mentioned it but it's it's true education so uh, here we see that education so free online uh, free world-class education and then uh, for another organization also uh, one of my favorite is a course era and there you can see also their mission statement we provide universal access to world's best education so what do they uh, offer they actually uh, they, what do they do they do uh, provider uh, they are providing world's best education to whom universal at that universal access actually they have two things uh, uh, implied one is that for whom they do it they do, they do it for anyone in this universe or we uh, I mean to limit it within our uh, capacity of understanding anyone living on this planet earth they try to take it to their access the world's best, best education and uh, obviously now they are doing it with online but here is their uh, pursuit that they want to get it as universal access as possible so maybe some other things can also come in the site later so here is uh, now we are going back to our presentation so in our presentation we are talking about this so here uh, if you ask these five questions you get more detailed picture of it or if you ask you these four, three simple questions you get to know uh, the three basic part of that uh, mission statement that what do you do for whom do you do it and how do you do it even for your career you can also apply this uh, this exercise and see that what is your mission statement what do you do for whom do you do it and how do you do it and you can also put it in your uh, when you write your CV your resume and you write a statement you know in the beginning and that's what you can also write it as like your mission statement that and you can also keep uh, if you think that you can be uh, you you want to put more uh, meaning into it you can do it but uh, mission statement we should not in doing that we should also think about the characters of a good mission statement uh, what about these things actually uh, it, it should be focusing on a limited number of goals we cannot just you know put all the good uh, goals in the world uh, or under the sky uh, to make my mission statement uh, more nice because uh, that then we lose our focus so it should be focused on a limited number of goals it should stress on a uh, major policies and values it should define major competitive spheres when when we talk about major competitive spheres it means that in which field or where we actually uh, plan to be competitive so what what domain we plan to uh, uh, to be to be competitive so if I go back to the uh, book you can see that uh, we have an example about how do how can we define the major competitive spheres so uh, here in the book you will see uh, just let me browse the book it seems that the book is uh, yeah I guess it will be uh, coming it, it is coming now so just a moment it, it seems uh, so if we see the major competitive spheres we see that uh, let's let's go back to the book so here we see no i think we have moved a little further yeah so in table 2.2 we see that uh, we have actually six competitive spheres that we can uh, we can uh, we can choose from like we can think about in which industry we are trying to be competitive or we are trying to compete or in product in which product or applications we are trying to be competitive 
or what kind of computers we try to uh, you know adopt we try to acquire or in which market segment we are trying to be competitive or in which vertical by vertical means you know in what kind of uh, when we have the value addition you know we have uh, a supply chain so in what channel levels we try to compete or in what geography we try to compete uh, now going back to the presentation so when uh, also we need to have a long term view so when now uh, we make a mission statement it's not going to change every year it has to have uh, a, a, a purpose a vision. Uh, it has to reflect a vision so uh, with that in that mission statement we also reflect the vision of where do we plan to reach in the next 10 or 20 years we see that and the short it should be short as i already mentioned in the beginning of my lecture that it, it is better to be like one sentence um, uh, and a number of words there and then uh, uh, and then it should be memorable and meaningful uh, it is also suggested that a mission statement should be uh, should be something that unite the whole organization's human forces into uh, one uh, single page and everybody is working for a uh, same uh, defined uh, goal uh, or a same defined purpose uh, but it can it can sometimes happens to be uh, uh, it can sometimes become vague and here you see an example like to build total brand value by innovating to deliver customer value and customer leadership faster better and more completely than our competition uh, Really not sure that what do uh, how do they do it and you know who are uh, yeah we see the customer but like uh, deliver the customer value uh, customer leadership faster better and more completely than our competition not okay let me let me just compare it with the google's mission statement so what is their mission statement to organize the world's information they uh, you can see the how do they do it and make it universally accessible uh, and here you see that for whom they are doing it they are doing it for everyone uh, you know, uh, available uh, on the on this planet earth and um, accessible and useful and uh, they have a, s a significant thing you know um, uh, that how uh, they are doing it for someone and what do they do they they make information uh, accessible and useful and world's information not uh, on a particular uh, limited with particular context and uh, and here you see another example about we build brands about the vague philosophy like we build brands and make the world a little happier by bringing our best to you uh, but here you see again a comparison with Google and you have this example uh, in your book also uh, uh, actually it, it is in the in the in the soft copy that I have shared with you about the marketing management of international edition there you will see that also Google they have very uh, uh, very uh, s clearly mentioned that what is their philosophy and guiding principle for doing their business in our next presentation we will talk about when the business is done with uh, with this mission statement and uh, they they think that uh, they can now uh, you know they, ca they have now guiding principle and a, a sense of purpose within their organization now they can work on uh, uh, defining their uh, business units strategic business units and why do you call them strategic business units we will also discuss about it in our next presentation thank you all for your patient hearing